For a challenge, I wanted to conquer the whole Rim world in 300 days. That is, 5 in-game years should be easy to destroy every single settlement, right? Well, there was a catch. I dropped in completely naked without any resources, food or weapons. I had absolutely no research unlocked and I added a bunch of beefed up ultra tech factions for extra difficulty. But I had a plan consisting of 5 building blocks of success that would allow me to crack this challenge wide open. But I'll tell you more about that later. So now relax, crack open a cold one and join me on this epic adventure, which began by our two heroes dropping from the sky. Alas, the slight side effect of them being naked was that they absolutely despised the freezing temperatures outside. So to fix that, I did something crazy. I decided to open the ancient danger, hoping it would not live up to its name. Oh shit, this place is dangerous, there's a cider in here. Now before we tackle that, let me introduce the two protagonists of the story. Buckwild was a hardworking, fast walking, big boned and brave gene modded soldier, with a passion for shooting things construction and socializing. That gene modding made him the perfect bait for the cider, while Maxi Pads, the fast learning, too smart, tough, eccentric pyromaniac with a chemical fascination and a passion for plants, medicine and research, ran into the ancient building in hopes of securing help. Nice, nice, we got friends. Friends disposed of the murderous mech while Maxipat stole the gun and clothes from the two downed ancient soldiers. But she also rescued them after treating Buckwild's wounds. Unfortunately, they were both freezing without clothes and one of them was plagued with an infection. Buck built a research bench on day two because you see, we were stupid like Ooga Boogas and had absolutely no technologies unlocked. So we started with basic furniture to at least learn how to make simple beds and Maxipads began working on that after she finished sowing the fields. Buck built a water well and a basic Latrine, then our lack of food became apparent. Slight starvation issue, don't worry about it. So Maxipads tried to eat Slick, who perished overnight due to an infection. I realized Slick might have smelled like fish to her, but this was not the time or the place for sexual fantasies, Maxi, so instead I sent her out to harvest some berries and nuts. Bug buried the unfortunate soldier and then crafted a short bow for Maxi. Zebo, the other soldier, was still suffering from hypothermia, so Bug built a campfire to keep the room warm, which made Zebo very happy. Zebo, my my son, he has joined. Hell yeah. Awesome. He was a hardworking body purist with big passion for cooking, so as excited he joined, but now we needed some clothes for him. So Bug hunted an injured Dimetrodon and then built a butcher stable where Maxipads quartered the big dino. Zebo turned the meat into some delicious meals and Bug hunted another dino, which meant we had enough heavy fur to craft tribal wear for a new recruit. Then Maxipads decided to name our little settlement. Smelly Armpit, perfect name for a settlement. After that, she finished the research on basic furniture and began learning about electricity. We also got our first hard in and Buck built the first proper beds, then constructed sturdy walls to enclose our little community. We had a nice amount of steel stored from all the ancient caskets Buck deconstructed, so we used that to build some basic traps at the entrance on day 7. We also built embrasures for defense and connected the area with dirt paths for faster movement. Then on day 9, Zebo decided to hit some iron ore with his rock hard face and Maxi Pads planted hill root for medicine and smoke leaf also for medicine. In the evening, I noticed one of the big dinosaurs out there had dementia, so so Bug decided to abuse that and he absolutely peppered the poor old dino with bullets. That gave us a decent chunk of fresh meat and Buck turned the moronic dino into a pelt coat for Zebo. A compi went mad after that and he almost got Zebo, but then it perished in our traps. Next day Zebo and Maxipads beat the shit out of each other due to ideology differences, so now would be the perfect time to introduce our main belief. Buck and Maxi followed the way of Arca supremacy. They were raiders and knew themselves to be superior to everyone on this planet. Plus they had some other interesting ideas. What is really good about this ideology is we accept eating aliens, but we also accept dating them, so we are nice. And that belief also united them in love on that day. So I had to begin researching complex furniture for double beds the next morning, after Maxi Pads finished with electricity. Blood Moon rose in the evening, but even though it was a dark omen, it was nowhere near as ominous as the fact that I realized I needed concrete to build power generators. Zebo's son arrived with a friendly caravan the next day. Zebo's son turned out to be a slug. Amazing. Slug or no slug, I tried to convince him to join his daddy, but clearly they had some issues and he refused. I traded for some medicine from the traders, then Bug built a quarry and it seemed like those merchants realized what a sorry excuse for a base this was and left us some components as a gift. Zebo and Maxi Pads planted cotton on day 14, then Bug built a double bed for his lover, which they happily tested out, but I guess they must have used some helpful fruit or something because Maxi got food poisoning. Bug then built a stone cutting table which I enclosed into a new 
new workshop room. Some disturbing news arrived in the evening of bandits spreading with new outposts, which makes this the perfect time to take a look at our beautiful planet and all the many faction bases we were going to destroy in the future. You see, there were 5 building blocks to our success, and I knew it would be really hard to achieve them all in just 300 days, but if I focused, it could be done. So first, I needed to unlock automation, so we could have auto drills producing the vast amount of resources we required. Then I needed to unlock atomic power, which would then supply all the power required to fuel glitter tech crafting stations, where we could then craft very advanced and very powerful endgame armor and weapons. Last but not the least, I wanted our own dropship, which we could fly around the planet and carry auto mortars with us to bombard the enemy bases. So yeah, there was a lot of work to do, and I continued with concrete making research on day 17, and Bug crafted first stone blocks, which he then used to build an alloy smelter. There you go, so now we can make concrete with cement and sand. It took me a while to realize I can dig sand at a digging spot, but then my research for cement got interrupted by Buck's proposal to Maxipads. I was happy for them, but I was even happier when I saw traders left me a hand cannon as a gift just in time as we were about to be raided by four aliens who decided to also wreck a dino first. Even a psychic suit popped up to help us, but there was no need as the raiders lost their lives in our traps without ever setting foot into our base. Zebo grabbed a shotgun we scavenged from the raiding party and then Buck crafted the first batch of concrete, allowing him to build a wood fire generator. Here we got electricity, let's go, it's about damn time. The next day we learned the Empire conquered a nearby town, and in response Bug decided to craft smokely fun sticks which Maxipads happily took for a test run. We also celebrated with a jubilee of piracy in the evening, which made everyone even happier. On day 22, Maxi finished machining research, but I wasn't quite ready to build that yet, because a bunch of raiders popped in and instantly got eaten by dinosaurs, who then proceeded to attack us. I don't know what I did to them, but a couple perished on our traps and then Zebo dispatched the last one. First batch of cotton was ready in the evening, then a group of traders got very confused. What, what do you mean you're trapped? You're not trapped, what, what is wrong with you? Zebo then built a battery so as not to waste all that excess power, and Buck built a tailoring bench then I assigned some clothing to be crafted. I then noticed an alpaca with glitch world medicine that wandered in and our boys quickly turned it into sausage. Holy shit, that's actually 31 glitch world medicine, that is amazing. Buck then built a small fridge to store meals and Zebo put on his new pants that Buck crafted. Another set of visitors broke the next day and got stuck in an escape loop just as I accepted a dessert call for help. Nusra joined us which made us hostile with sovereignty of god, but he came in with some great gear and with his shooting skills I knew he'd fit right in. Five raiders then popped in and I was betrayed by the broken visitors. I swear to god if you're gonna let them in I'm gonna be so pissed. Stop it. I had to flee my own base which was exactly the perfect time for Maxipads to go on a fire starting spree. We dispatched one of the raiders while the others rampaged across our home. We pulled one more on the traps and then they decided to flee, which we didn't make easy on them. There were some small injuries but in the end the skirmish was very much worth it. The next day a fierce space battle raged somewhere above us, setting half of the forest on fire. Nasra bravely saved one of the fallen combatants and Maxipads treated his wounds. She also replaced her hand cannon with a gun lance and Buck went full on akimbo. On day 29, Buck and Maxi decided to get married and a party ensued, everyone happy to still be alive on this crazy rim world. The next day, Maxi Pads became an expert researcher, while Nostra began crafting adobe bricks from mud. Buck built a new sidewall and then he crafted fur gloves and aprons for everybody to improve their global work speed. Then a dino self-tamed and we proudly named it Steve. Buck continued the base expansion with more outside walls, which he completed on day 32, while Nostra caught malaria. But Max Maxipads made sure he was well treated. Bug then built our first solar panel for better power production and we got a full load of fresh meals raining from the sky. Bug then extended our trap defense row because I decided to accept another deserter quest. Velzara joined us wielding an assault rifle and being absolutely trash at every other skill besides combat. But that was exactly the expertise we were looking for as a bunch of wasters dropped on the map in hunt of her. They only tripped three traps before they turned tail to run and the squad chased the stragglers. Naturally, that made Maxi Maxipads turned pyromaniac, but Nasra stood guard and made sure she didn't burn anything too precious to the colony. Then we began building sand pads connecting different parts of the colony for easier and faster movement, which were finished on day 35. Buck and Zebo built a couple of shells for easier storage, then I assigned a block of coal to be mined, which Buck then combined with iron to smelt steel. That gave us enough resources to then build a biofuel refinery, because you see, from all that pooping at the latrine, we had a lot of fecal sludge lying around, and luckily, 
Velzara was capable of turning that poop into camp fuel. Alas, the smell did not impress my colonists because two social fights occurred in that day, but that didn't stop our married couple. So you guys are both injured. They have heavily injuries, but they're banging here. Oh, you see the beauties. Zebo then destroyed our old generator, which was wasting wood. And just as I assigned a camp fuel power generator to be built, this happened. Oh boy. Run, dinosaurs. There was a psychic suppressor there, a couple of turrets and two mechs. But since they dropped right outside of our base, I decided to use Nostra's sniping skills to trigger them. He sniped the tesseron and then the little cider died on our traps. We then destroyed the psychic suppressor, but the turrets got off a lucky shot and Zebo lost his kidney in the process. I decided to leave the turrets out there as a preliminary defense of the colony and made sure my colonists avoided their firing lines. Maxi then planted psychoid plants to satisfy Vilzara, who had a psychic dependency on account of being a stone wave and Bug began building what was to be our new small fridge. Maxipads finished microelectronics research the next day, which was a huge step towards a brighter future for the colony, and then I told her to start researching early automation. Bug finished the fridge area in the evening, so now Vilzara was able to start hunting dinosaurs for their meat. We stored our food in the fridge, and then Nostra also joined Vilzara on the hunt. Bug built more storage shelves, and I decided to harvest more natural food on the map before winter hit, but then this happened. Empire just lost their main settlement to a virus toxers. Now they have this place left that they conquered before. All that conquest happening out in the world while well, we were still afraid of one flimsy mech cluster. But luckily a trader caravan showed up on day 42 and fixed that shameful spot for us. Buck was able to rebuild the sprung traps now that the mechs were gone and then Nostro expertly sniped a mad dino. Buck then built a new high-tech research bench for us. Oh my god, I think... <laughs> That thing is way bigger than I thought it's gonna be. I decided to build a machining table from the remaining steel in our storage, and I also replaced the alloy smelter with an electrical version for faster production. But then, a raid happened. A bunch of bloodthirsty pigmen charged our colony only to die on our traps, but to show that overconfidence is indeed a slow and insidious killer, I decided to charge after them, and then this happened. Are you kidding me? What? Yes, our best doctor and researcher now had a permanent gunshot injury to her brain. Buck took over doctoring duties from his half-brain-dead wife, but at least she was still able to walk and her research capabilities weren't completely diminished. Alas, I had to take her off doctoring duties. On day 47, two big dinos tried to eat Buck, but he managed to make it back to safety in time. So, one of them died on the traps, while the second one perished to the firing squad. Buck then began building our future small kitchen, and then nothing of note happened until day 50, when Buck finally built the machining table where he shredded the mech remains we had lying around, getting some valuable steel and plasteel out of it, and he also deconstructed a ship chunk for more steel and components. Maxipads got stoned to the point she couldn't walk anymore the next day. Buck, you went to sleep instead of actually rescuing your wife? And while he wasn't the best husband, he was a good builder and he constructed a proper electric stove in the new kitchen, where Zebo cooked our first fine meals the next day. I also started research on multi-analyzer because I knew it was an important next step in unlocking our full potential. Snow began to fall the next day, exposing the permanent summer for the lie that it was. But we weren't too worried about that because Zebo began cooking some hot, soothing psychic tea for everyone. But unfortunately, tea wasn't the only psychic thing hitting the colony. I gave Bug the new SMG weapons, which was just in time as another mech cluster popped down right outside of our gates. Nasser proved himself a masturbator as he lured dagger snots onto our traps. Then he put his sniper rifle to good use and outright the turrets to their demise. Zebo finished off the last machine, then our brain dead lady threw a party for everyone. Everybody partying and just chilling out here. That's good to see. With Randy sending us more and more raids, I decided to make some helmets for the colonists, but I should have known that lead would be the wrong choice of material. Another Steve joined the colony, then a shuttle crashed on our map, and Bug decided to save one of the fallen people. And by save, I mean in prison. Uma Spore was a great miner and social person, but unfortunately she sucked at fighting. But we needed those mining skills, so I told Bug to convert and recruit her. And then, for some reason, Bug gifted Nusra a small stone, which made the fellow happy. Maybe he was looking for a smarter company to avoid his brain-dead wife. Then he truly showed himself the leader as he proceeded to beef up the outside walls. Vilzara went to mine more iron and Maxipads finished multi-analyzer research. Buck was slowly recruiting Umaspor and crafting those lead helmets that nobody wanted. Then we learned some disturbing news. This bandit outpost upgraded over here, that's fine. 
We'll kill them all eventually. Then it was springtime again, which meant the colony celebrated its first birthday, and I decided to build a proper dining room as a gift, which Bug began working on the next day. He also converted Umaspur to Way of Supremacy on day 63, and then the dining room was finally completed. I wanted some art for it, but that was work for future Bug, because first I told him to craft a couple new flag jackets, so we could have some better armor than the dino leather thongs everyone was sporting. Maxi Pants also decided to burn the cotton fields, but we stopped her and she put on one of the excellent new jackets Bug crafted. More world conquests happened on day 67 and then Bug built a robotics machining table. I also wanted to build a multi-analyzer but it required all kinds of different materials we didn't have. So instead Bug built a comms console and then some more dinos died on our traps. Here they come and they're down. I assigned bronze to be smelted and tin and titanium to be mined for the multi-analyzer on day 69. Then Randy sent me a solar flare, short circuit event and the raid from the pigs that made Maxi Pants brain dead all at the same time. Luckily, piggies died on the traps and Nostra and Zebo chased down the stragglers. Nothing of note happened till day 73 then, at which point another set of raiders jumped us. In fact, it was Volzara's grandma who came to rescue her granddaughter, but naturally that didn't go well for her or the rest of her centenarian friends. That made Volzara so sad she actually threw a party for everyone so I guess we all deal with death of our loved ones in our own way. Some more broken than the others. And since Buck and Maxi desired the sweet music of violence, I told them to shoot a random wild pigman who was eating our crops. Then it finally happened. Really need somebody that can dig. Yes, let's go! Since she was great at social, I gave her a cool conversion staff so she could spread our ideology. She became our zealous inquisitor and she instantly converted Vilzara who then instantly became upset that we haven't conquered anyone in a while. Buck then officially became the glorious leader of our ideology as well as the colony and then Umaspor broke because she hasn't beaten up anyone in a while, which tells you a lot about the living conditions in our colony. A dino tried to eat Nostra again and everyone joined to obliterate the poor thing. Then Bug began construction of our new rec room and we got an extra camp fuel generator up and running. Bug built a billiard stable and a new cozy place then started working on comfy sofas. Then Umaspor zealously converted Zebo, and since now everyone was acting so bellicose, let's give people violence, shall we? I took everyone but Maxi Pets and Uma and they traveled the world to attack the nearest enemy settlement. Alas, they got ambushed in the process and had to deal with a couple of bow wielding impets who melted before their shots. But the enemy settlement wasn't ready to melt so quick and easy because it was the tough Neanderthals we attacked. Buck was caught in the crossfire as he used his battle command, but the rest of the boys were able to kite the tribals. Zebo no! Zebo run! But then we did it. The base was destroyed and our thirst for conquest was finally slated. Buck wasn't feeling too good, but he was good enough to make it back home and treat Maxi Pets, who was struck with plague in his absence. Buck repaired the traps on day 80 and Umaspur began working in the quarry. Then she converted the last of the unbelievers, Nusra, to the one true way of Arco Supremacy. So everybody is now Arco Supremacist here. Love it. Everyone then gathered and celebrated the jubilee of piracy and Bug built a radio and a TV for colonists entertainment needs. Valzara smelted the bronze we needed for multi-analyzer and Uma found some gold in the quarry, which was the last resource required. Buck had to go and deconstruct a couple of ship chunks to get more components. Then at long last we rejoiced as he built the multi-analyzer. Uma sported and started a new project because I wanted bedrooms for everyone. Alas, that was rudely interrupted by a pack of men hunting velociraptors who almost caught Nostra who found himself in the crossfire from the squad. Bug built a new butcher's room and Uma finished mining the bedrooms on day 86. Power was flickering constantly but luckily Maxipads finished geothermal power research and I sent Bug to build new walls that would include a geothermal well. A psychic ship crashed nearby the next day so I sent Nostra to bait the ciders protecting it. He did that flawlessly. Where are you running off to, you stupid mech? Get back here. They both perished on our traps, then Zebo blew up the ship. A dino tried to eat Uma on day 88, but she destroyed it. Good shot again. Let's go. Oh my god, she actually did it. Buck continued working on the walls and then his uncle showed up at the base with a trader caravan. While he sucked at fighting, he was an amazing doctor, so Buck tried to convince him he should join us, but he preferred to continue selling fresh organs, ethically sourced from local children. Umas bored and leveled up to an expert prospector and Buck obliterated a little dino who went berserk just before completing the last of the outer walls. He also smelted concrete that we needed for the generator. Then we got some disturbing news. It's Maxi Pat's sister. Oh, where are you? Right there. 
We kinda, we kinda have to go and try to save her. But first, Buck built the geothermal jetty and crafted a new flag jacket for himself. I sent Buck, Nosoro and Vilzara on a rescue mission, and they got ambushed by a bunch of crazy Kentrosauruses. But the spiky dinos had a lower chance of survival than a furry in a skinhead bar. We then saved Maxipat's sister. Oh my god, you are a high mate, aren't you? Yep, she's a high mate, great at social, passionate about cooking. And returned back home where Buck just dumped her on the cold, hard ground. But Maxi was a good sister and rescued her. Then Zebo tamed a new dino we could ride into battle. Nasrao's crafting skill was pretty good now due to all the stone he cut, so I assigned him to armor production next. I decided to extend the walls on day 96, and Maxi Pets completed fabrication research. I also traded one of our Steves for Neutro Amen, and then a serial murderer decided to join us. He's probably gonna betray us. But that's fine, he's got beer. I assigned him to be our new artist because everyone desired a sculpture representing the way of Arco Supremacy. New outer walls were completed and the art bench was built in the evening. Nordgren started working on that sculpture straight away and I could already imagine that a murderer crafting a supremacist sculpture would 100% make it into a full Trump statue. Nordgren finished the sculpture which was surprisingly good quality, but I didn't have a temple to put it up just yet, so I told him to make more art using sand. Almost then converted Boyle just in time to see a group of raiders attack us. I think their transport pods misfired and half of them died. The rest of them perished on our tramps and I got everyone out there to execute the downed people, just to satisfy everyone's craving for violence. Are we the baddies? At this point, Nordgren did decide to betray the colony, so for that and the Trump statue, he got shot in the face. Buck then imprisoned him because I kinda still wanted an artist in the colony. Now I know, it's been more than 100 days and we barely raided one enemy base. But worry not, research towards the 5 building blocks of our success was progressing nicely and there was still a long way to go to day 300. Then Bug began constructing our future temple, where we could worship the supremacy of bloody murder in peace. A dino exploded on our traps on day 103, but that wasn't enough fire for Maxipads and she decided to attend burning down the whole colony. Bug became a proper architect next and Maxi broke again on day 104 and decided to burn even more stuff. Bug finished the shell of our temple then he built a fabrication bench where we could start making components. He also began furnishing the temple and brought in the sculpture. Then a snow began to fall again so I assigned a bunch of heaters to be built in community buildings. A couple of naked people showed up then trying to steal our food but we showed them exactly what happened to thieves around here. They see got one final meal, huh? Was it worth it? Definitely not. I also sold a lot of garbage equipment we accumulated over time and I also sold a ton of recreational drugs to a lone visitor for even more money. Buck finally finished building the temple and so at long last we began building proper bedrooms. Then I noticed we were very low on food so Nostro brought in a giant dinosaur with Zebo quickly turned into meals. That must have impressed Boyle because she totally wanted to jump Zebo's meat. Nostro almost got eaten while hunting a dino on day 109 and Buck finished the first two bedrooms. He also built a circuit breaker to avoid the short circuit events, then Velzara destroyed a mad dinosaur. Nostro started making components for us and Nordgren rejoined the colony. And since Nordgren is a moron, he went to sleep inside a fucking fridge. I assigned our new lovers to their new bedroom and Nordgren went back to his old job, while Bug continued working on bedrooms for everyone. Those were completed on day 113. Then Bug started working on what was to be our future hospital. I assigned sterile tiles to be built there, which was now possible because we got plenty of silver from drug trade, like the good supremacy that we were. A new Steve joined the family and we built a drug lab for medicine production, which Umaspor quickly put to good use. Bug then completed the sterile floors. Alright, so now to make uh, hospital beds, we need stainless steel. So I assigned stainless steel production to be researched, which Maxi finished on the same day. But to actually craft stainless steel, we needed an advanced alloy smelter. Then Aunt of Maxi Pads and Boyle showed up with a caravan, and since she was amazing at research and medicine, I decided to attempt to recruit her. Let's get this very smart person in. Oh, let's go! We did it! Rika actually joined! Uma's board then instantly taught her about our lord and savior Arco Supremacy and Rika started working on research right away. Nostro and Uma got the plague then, which our new doctor took care of with ease. Then Bug got confused and tried to build a snowman out of dirt. <laughs> How did you, how do you think that's gonna go? Volzara learned from Maxi and started a forest fire, then the pigmen showed up again. They actually made it a bit further up the tramp corridor this time around and once again we chased them down. Both of the plague victims survived the disease and then it was springtime again. 
again, meaning the colony celebrated two years of survival. Nasser began working on more flak jackets, and Buck smelted our first batch of stainless steel, which he then used to build two proper hospital beds. Nasser then made some new shirts and pants, and I assigned flak helmets to be made as well. Then nothing special happened until day 124, when Maxi Pads got pregnant. Let's be real, I didn't want that for our half brain dead researcher, but clearly Buck was incapable of keeping it in his pants. We were strip mining all the iron on the map when a bunch of Neanderthals showed up. Run away, little girl, run away. Rika peppered them as she ran and then they perished in our traps. We hunted down the stragglers, then I traded a bunch of crappy sticks for Nutraemin. We got a fresh batch of potatoes in on day 127. And then Bug crafted the medium machine frame we needed for an automated mining drill. And with that, one of our first building blocks of success was built. It was very hungry for power, but it instantly started producing the goods. But unfortunately, it also produced an infestation and a bunch of angry insects burrowed into the colony. Keep pulling them back, boys. Nice. One of them is down. Two of them are down. The next day, a couple of raptors decided to join the insects on our dining table, and then I noticed some of the colonists put on the new titanium helmets Nasser crafted. We began researching rheumatomics on day 132, because nothing bad ever happened when supremacists got hold of nuclear power, and then they showed up. Oh Jesus, the thrombos turned into dinosaurs. They decided our traps were a perfect place to be, and we used our guns to help them pass to the other side a little bit faster. Right, you guys go there. Oh, Rika. Nice. We got hundreds of legend letter out of them, and I told Nasra to put that to good use. Skipping to day 135, I bought a kidney for Zebo, which Rika expertly inserted in him. Bug began building our future atomics building, then another infestation popped up, this time in our workroom. Luckily, there were just a couple of centipedes, which we easily turned into sausages, so that wasn't the worst. We built Rim Atomics Research Bench on day 137, and Rika began researching the atomic power for us. Nasra then crafted new legend letter shirts, and then a couple of people got sick with gut worms. Skipping to day 140, Bug built the research reactor so we could further study atomics power, and then he also built the room atomics machining table. Valzara then attempted to destroy our research bench, so Nasra had to escort her to the prison, so she would cool down. A bunch of naked people tried to steal our food on day 142, but that didn't end well for them. Destroy. There you go, that should fix your needs for violence. Our first room atomics project also completed, so we started on the next step in unlocking nuclear power. Then a heat wave began, and Zebo built air conditioning for Maxipads, who was lying in the hospital. Buck then began working on our new research lab, but then Maxipads went into labor. Buck mentally broke the instant he saw his child, so that bode well for baby Tomomi, who at least got daddy's regeneration genes. The baby was just left on the floor and was starving with both of her parents otherwise occupied, so so Boyle had to take care of her. Another infestation popped up on day 146. Let's go boys, just keep on kiting. Then it was time to go to war again. The same four conquistadors marched out towards the Neanderthals, and Valzara was the one to masterfully bait the Uga Bugas this time around. We kept on kiting them down, and even though Nasra lacked a steed, we got them. Nasra is gonna get got. Come on, shoot the guy. Oh, let's go, we did it. The tribals didn't have some stainless steel we borrowed, then it was time for our triumphant return. Which was just in time, as Maxipat showed herself to be a terrible mother by throwing her baby into the prison. Boyle and Zebo got married on day 148. Yes, good job, get married in a fucking storage room. Bug built a mortar and I designated explosive shells to be crafted. Then I assigned air conditioning to be built for the bedrooms and set up a plan for another geothermal generator. But then, Boyle's and Max his uncle tried to extort us. So this boss wants me to pay almost 5,000 silver. Yeah, sure. We'll totally do that. Of course, I said no, and a bunch of furries showed up. Naturally, when furries show up, we either take out our guns or our trouser snakes, depending on thickness of their thighs, but unfortunately for them, it was guns this time around. Nasro crafted our first explosive shells, and then Zebo triggered a bunch of dinos, who thought he'd be an easy snack. Nice shot, Zebo. Let's go. Come on, buddy. They did manage to tear him a new butthole, but Rika made sure he survived, even though he caught an infection at the same time as Bug caught the plague. Alas, with our high-tech hospital, Rika's healing skills, and Uma's oratory prowess, they were both fine. Nasr began working on a legend letter duster, which he instantly equipped. It had great protection, but not even that could save Nasr from what was coming in the future. I then sold a lot of our excess resources to make money from something else than drugs, then piggies dropped from the sky once again, but traps and guns turned them into 
corpse starch in no time. I constructed a new storeroom next to recreation area, then Buck built a crematorium for corpse disposal. He also finished the North Geothermal Generator and we started working on prosthetics research. I also wanted to continue down the rheumatomics line to hit our second building block of success, so we started working on a nuclear building extension. But then more piggies showed up again. Nasser sent them a welcome message via a mortar, so they decided it would be a great idea to come perish in her base. Alright, they're coming in. They're coming in. Oh, they're fleeing. Fast forward to day 160, Bug built a shell of a new nuclear generator, which he completely finished on day 163. He then began working on a new power room, which we dug into the mountain. Then a bunch of injured furries attacked us again. Boyle stole their gear and saved her uncle, who tried to extort us in the past. Then a bunch of velociraptors tried to eat Nordgren, but he survived with the help of a good old friend called Shotgun. Our camp fuel generators were brought into the new power room, and Bug built two extra ones, but then the Empire dropped in to siege our colony. Nasra attempted to trigger them with his mortar, which he finally succeeded at in the morning. They assaulted the colony, but just like Tottenham, there was no victory for them here. Onwards to day 168, we had two big spiky steves that self-tamed, and then Buck finally completed the power room. I then told him to start working on a new workshop, but then Sapper struck on day 170. Luckily for us, they broke our walls right next to our defense line. Okay, they can use embrasures as well now, so this is gonna hurt. But while it did hurt us a little bit, it hurt them a lot more. We captured one of them and basically barely saved her in time, but then this happened. Did you really just drop inside of my child's home? Too late I realized these guys came packing, so as I pulled my people back into the protective shell of Buck's shield, they aced Nasro. They tried to kidnap the child, but our firing line stood strong. Alas, Nasro was dead. It was final like your dad leaving to buy cigarettes. Even though we got a lot of great weaponry from the raiders, it still hurt to lose our best crafter, because that meant we now had nobody who could craft all those endgame items we needed for our five building blocks of success. We did capture one of the raiders though, and then we barely buried Nasro with great respect. Buck fixed his broken bedroom and improved the prison the next day, and he built a bionics workbench in the new workshop on day 173. I assigned a new bionic hand to be crafted, which Buck himself completed, and then Rika replaced Uma's old hook hand with a fresh new powerful bionic. I gave Boyle wardening expertise due to her high social skill, then Buck built a new quarry. Maxi pads broke on day 178. You just steal Nasro, put Nasro back. What are you doing, Maxi? And then an infestation popped up. We destroyed the nasty bugs with only minimal injuries, and then Bug dumped Maxi. I mean, what did you expect? She was kind of brain dead, so yeah. Not even a surprise. He then built a barn for our dinos and Maxipads began her broken spiral that continued for months. Half of our colony got sick from sensory mechanites next, then we began planting Devil Strand. Bug began crafting turbine blades that we needed for nuclear power. Then Sasha joined us. Besides being Nostra's murderer, she was also great at construction, so I was kinda happy she became a colonist. A couple pigmen sappers then popped up, although half of them just decided to go wild. Alas, the ones that did make it in tried to burn half of our colony. This certainly made Maxi Pets proud, but if we ignore a couple of burns, we smoke them. Sasha then constructed the big turbine we needed for rheumatomics, and then I noticed this. Oh my god, the piggies are eating each other. What the hell is going on here? Naturally, we couldn't have cannibals running freely around, although if dead pigmen tasted like bacon, was it even cannibalism? In any case, we dealt with them throughout the next few days, and then our second prisoner joined us. Ooga Booga was to be our new main crafter, and Sasha was renamed to Nusra's demise. Ooga Booga, like the Neanderthal she is, she's gonna be making uranium pellets for us so we can power our nuclear reactor. Then Bug built the transformer we needed to actually get power from nuclear energy. We built wells and water towers next, because we needed water for the cooling tower, and Bug built a pumping station on day 187. Then an infestation popped in again, as Steve got hurt in the process, but otherwise we were just happy for the insect meat delivery service. Nostros deed and built a reactor control station, and at long last the nuclear power research was complete, and a big step towards our end goal was done. But then I realized we were out of uranium, and Uga Booga's skill was too low to craft fuel rods anyway, so I assigned her to tailoring and told her to keep on crafting dusters until her skill was higher, but that meant our end goal was to be pushed back further, as a great crafter was paramount to my five building blocks of success. Our baby then finally learned to walk. Finally they can do something. 
Not just lying around like a little shit they are. But the little shit instantly broke because she missed the sound of violence. I renamed her the child and Buck built a small classroom for her. Then a volcanic winter began on day 192 and piggies returned again, though half of them decided to embrace the nature. The child then received a gift from me because this was a dangerous world. Then I decided to expand our base a little bit, but a high level psychic drone hit the colony the next day and for a while half of the ladies were broken. That got interrupted on day 196 though by another infestation. Get a mooga booga. Nice. But luckily our Steves took the brunt of the damage again. We started working on what was to be our future toilets the next day and hunted down more of the wild piggies. We bought a couple of new helmets from the Alliance traders and then Bug built the water treatment plant and began working on a sewage treatment as well. Since Ooga Booga was learning slowly and Nostro's demise was able to take over the construction job, I assigned Bug to focus on crafting again. I also renamed Nostro's demise into NSD for short or NSD for easier pronunciation. Volcanic Winter then ended on day 202 and NSD started making smart toilets for us. She then built a sewage treatment plant which meant diarrhea was now an acceptable condition in the colony and then I sent Buck to shoot a pigman in the face. Violence still missing, you just murdered that piggy. NSD then built more solar panels and then she finished our new communal bathroom with showers. Since the child complained that the water was cold, she even built her a boiler which made my colonists very happy. A bunch of big boy dinos came to eat us on day 206 and they slowly perished on our traps. Okay. Careful, it's coming. All right, it's down. We got our first batch of Devil Strand in the next day and Buck put that to good use to make Devil Strand dusters. Then Nostro's murderers arrived again. My God, they have Tesla helmets. Light recon armor, Tesla armor. Oof. These guys are fucking strong. They tried to siege us, but Buck said no. They charged through the traps, but then decided to flee at the last second. We downed and captured one of them and grabbed his good gear. They also had plasteel on them we so desperately needed for advanced components, which Ooga Booga then used to craft a bionic leg. She also finished all the uranium pellets, then Rika installed that bionic leg on NSD who was missing it. Buck reached level 10 in crafting, then I gave the child another automatic weapon because this was Space America. Fear the child, for the child will not fear you. You. I was missing one single plasteel piece for the new research lab I wanted to build, but then luckily Mags decided to attack us. The little ones perished on our traps and the rest were shot by Buck. Another infestation popped up on day 213. I'm trying to get past Steve's again, but that's not gonna work. And then a high psychic drone hit the colony as well. With the extra plasteel, Ensley was able to finish the research lab, then we started working on a base expansion. Max joined us on day 216, and Maxipads gave him her good Browning MG gun on account of her still being half brain dead. I set him to construction job, and then a tiny infestation popped up in our battery room. I assigned a charged shotgun to be crafted, then a couple of dinos tried to eat the child. Valzara grabbed a new shotgun, and then we traded 10,000 silver worth of dusters for thousands of new leather that Ooga Booga and Buck could then again turn into more dusters. We began working on a mausoleum for poor Nostro and then Ooga crafted her first masterwork item and Buck leveled up. Let's go, he's 11 crafting now. Solar Flare took out our power the next day, so we built a power shield that should help in the future. There we go, this is now Nostro's burial chamber and that's his sarcophagus. May he rest in pieces. May he rest in pieces indeed. Deep core quarries research completed and I assigned parts to be crafted for a plasma drill. Alas, what I didn't realize was that we needed level 15 crafter for the advanced AI core. So our end goal hit yet another setback on this bumpy road to day 300. We also started working on the trap quarter extension. Please don't stand on the traps as you make them, that seems just stupid. Yet another infestation popped up on day 223 and as always we turned the bugs into sandwiches in no time. A bunch of of Tox Raider showed up the next day to test our new traps and Buck got himself a new low shield pack. Then we built a new bedroom for Max on day 225. Auto Cluster Mortars research was finished next which was another important step on our checklist to world domination. In celebration I decided to blow up another tribal settlement and Buck led the bloodthirsty expedition. And like deadly fallen angels they arrived the next day. Yes, yes. We are absolutely destroying them. The tribals tried throwing rocks at us, but our guns said no, and we turned them into red mush left to rot on the ground. Another infestation popped up on day 230. Here they come. 
Maxi, run! And then Boyle turned the insects into burgers. Bug then finally reached level 12 in crafting, meaning he could now start working on nuclear fuel rods and our road to world conquest was back on track. All the glitter tech research we needed was also completed by day 232 and we started working on plasteel refining because we were still lacking in that crucial component. In anticipation of all that nuclear power, we began working on a big battery room. Then a social fight turned bad on day 236. A social fight and she destroyed his leg? Ooga Booga began refining plasteel which allowed us to finish the new battery room. She was also able to make a new bionic leg for Zebo, which Rika installed in darkness. Bug then crafted the final fuel rod and Rika started the reactor. The cooling was good and the capacitor was able to produce 73,000 watts of power. Ladies and gentlemen, at long last we finally have nuclear power. With that step completed, we were now ready for glitter tech. So I assigned Buck to start crafting computer components and then another infestation popped up. A giant mech cluster dropped on the map the next day and I sent Buck with a sniper rifle to trigger them. Alas, they set his Steve on fire, so he retreated to the base. I assigned EMP shells to be crafted, then a siege raid dropped in. And here we go. Nice. I used the computer components then to build the first auto cluster mortar and it unleashed on the mech cluster instantly. Mechs weren't impressed by my actions and so they ran for our traps. Unfortunately, a Steve died to a centipede but we had our revenge. Here comes the senti boy. Let's go destroy it boys. Yes, yes. Ensdy built a sarcophagus for Steve and the whole colony gathered for the burial. An engraving on this sarcophagus is shaped like a heart surrounded by stars. Oh, that is so sweet! I then used the EMP shells to blast the shield protecting the mech cluster and another centipede came to party. Slowly but surely we're doing it. Get him, Ooga Booga. With that monstrosity defeated, I was now able to turn on the auto cluster mortar again to blast the mech buildings from afar, which were finally fully destroyed the next day. NSD then built the second cluster mortar on day 244. Then yet another infestation popped up. Here we go. Get a Mooga Booga. And they built the Glitter Tech Electrolyzer next, allowing us to craft silicon, which Bug began working on the next day. I also decided to start crafting Nanosuit Helmets, the first of the Glitter Tech endgame armor I wanted, and that meant we were back on track for glorious conquest. Then the trader we wanted finally showed up and we bought magnetic coils, computer components, and at long last, that advanced AI core. This is finally gonna be the end of a million infestations. Max also built the Glitter Tech Robotic Assembler, where we could now craft computer components and magnetic coils directly. Bug then equipped the first nanosuit helmet and Max finished the plasma drill, so we could instantly start bulk producing steel. Yes, it's taking 3000 watts, but that's the production we need. The child hit the growth moment and I gave her the kind trait and passion for mining, because why the hell did we ban child labor when children crave the mines? I switched the plasma drill to plasteel mining on day 250 and Bug finished a nanosuit helmet for Ensdy. Ooga Booga then started working on computer component production. And she makes five? Oh, she makes five at the same time, that's awesome. Then we started expanding the base to the north and Bug began working on nanosuits and he finished and equipped the first one on day 253. Oh man. Look at this. That's pretty decent. Base extension was completed the next day, and we began working on a landing pad. Then Ensdy built a matter fabricator on day 256. This thing takes 65,000 watts. The launch pad was finally completed on day 258, and I assigned our very expensive dropship to be built. Buck finished the last nano suit the next day, and I told him to start crafting reactive suits next. Then Ensdy finished building the ship. And there it is, boys. There it is. We got our own albatross. I also bought the Neurocure framework for maxipads from a trader and Buck finished his own reactive suit. Rika then operated on Maxi's brain on day 264 and at long last she was brain dead no more. Look at that, it's gone, successfully mended maxipads brain scar, oh you'll love to see that. We spruced up our dining area with some gold tiles, then I assigned speed skin suits to be made, which Ooga Booga began working on the next day and I assigned the first one to Buck. So that thing doesn't offer much protection but it gives you plus 200 global work speed plus two move speed. A bunch of stinky goblins arrived via drop pods then and got obliterated in the first cluster mortar wave. Then we took care of the rest. Bug completed the last reactor suit then I told him to start working on new MRG5 rifles. Those were the ultimate glitter tech weapons as Bug showcased against some dinos. Ensdy then built more cluster mortars and everyone equipped their speed skin suits. I then gave Max an APB rifle because I wanted one of the raiders to have the gun that sets people on fire. Ooga Booga then crafted 
fired some OC defense rifles, which were indeed amazing for defense of the colony. The child's got the best and the biggest rifle now, love it. We were then ready to raid, and I decided to attack the pigment in revenge for Maxipad's brain. We loaded into the albatross and off we went. Oh my god, this is so huge. <laughs> the raiders dropped on the edge of the map and charged the piggies. They came at us with oinks and groins, but they stood no chance against our tactical supremacy. Excuse me. What are you doing? Oh, they tried to destroy my shit. 30 days remaining till my deadline and we still had the whole world to conquer. But if you still believe in me, you should totally subscribe now because did you know that less than 10% of you watching this video are actually subscribed? Well, be more like Ooga Booga who began working on marine boots and gloves for everyone and then Bug became the first full-on marine. I built another fabrication room just for our smart Neanderthal so she could work in peace and then we launched another attack. Our target had mortar defense, but luckily it was just one. Destroy the mortar guy, let's go. Then we only needed to dispatch a couple of enemies and the base was ours. From there I sent the raiding party further north to attack more Saurids and we landed in a swamp. And we are here to show them what happens to swamp people. Buck actually got slightly bruised this time around, but otherwise our raiders were once again victorious. Max also stole a fertilized human egg and we brought it back home for the child to play with. On day 274, I decided to send a secondary squad out there with Zebo and the ladies. Their goal was to cross the mountains on Steve's and attack the nearby farming site and the piggies guarding the place. Oh, they're fleeing already. We borrowed their cucumbers and then I sent the main squad to raid the goblins. We landed in the swamp and while the goblins did have a solid defense line and battle works, they stood no chance against Buck and the fire. We truly were in the end game now because I decided to backstab my friends and kin. They had a mortar for defense and Buck actually got clipped, but that only enraged him and he led the squad in a headlong charge towards the enemy. They tried to flank us but not even that maneuver could help them survive. I sent the second squad out again on day 277 and Ooga Booga started making exoskeleton frames for everyone. That thing helps global work speed, move speed and carrying capacity. Second squad then absolutely obliterated the loggers and we quickly yoinked their hard wood. Bug then attacked another of our friends. You shooting chunks at us? What the fuck is this? Using stone chunks as mortar fuel tells you all you need to know about the enemy capabilities and while they did try to outrun us to our ship, they stood no chance. Ooga Booga finished the last of the frames and started working on reactive suits next. Bug's squad then raided the slavers and we sniped them from afar and set them on fire. Ensdi did get hurt in the fight, but Buck took good care of her. Ensdi then built a masterwork golden shelf in the mausoleum, who restored that human egg we stole some time ago. A couple naked people tried to steal it, but the child put them down, albeit unhappily. He does hate it that a lot of his kin has been murdered. <laughs> Buck's squad then dropped down in a rainy desert and destroyed the last slaver outpost. Then it was time for Zebo and the ladies to carry on out again. Go, go, dino riders. Slowly but surely, we were taking care of the outposts and again, the farmers were outmatched by our glitter tech armor and weaponry and we stole their 3000 tox potatoes. A couple of hungry dinos must have smelled those potatoes because they ambushed the caravan on their way home, but we turned them into sausages. Buck attacked Maxie's and Boyle's uncle next and then Steve was instantly blasted in the neck by a mortar shell. Buck healed her while Max and Nordgren took out the mortar guy and then it was business as usual. Oh, they're all going for my base. And by base, I mean ship. Screw you guys, no. Ooga Booga then finished the last nano suit we needed. And so we flew out there with a bigger squad and absolutely unloaded on the toxic wasters who thought that shelling us with their tox poison could save them. We then flew all the way north to attack gas tank. Here come the boys landing on the beach, nice and easy. Even though these wasters had spacer tank, marine armor and such, they broke in an instant and decided to flee. Back at home, the child blew up a dino. Then I sent the second squad to attack another farming site. While they traveled, Ooga Booga and Bug began working on bionic limbs for us and then Zebo and the ladies completely destroyed the goblin farmers in the desert. We took their brussels sprouts back home where our rec room and dining room were now fully encased in gold. Buck's squad went to raid furry pirates and they took two of the auto cluster mortars with them. We installed them at the edge of the map and then they let fly. The furries did try to flank us and destroy our mortars. Oh, they're shooting our shit. How dare you. Our ship and artillery were damaged, but that was easy to fix. Furries had another base and we snuck through the caves to destroy them, killing their top cheese guy in the process. We then attacked one of the three southern pirate bases and we charged straight into the heart of their home while the cowards ran away. They're trying to steal our ship. Don't let them. 
Get out here. I then decided to visit an abandoned biotech lab, which was very dark and held a surprise ambush that we easily dealt with. Holy shit, this guy is taking a punishment. We attacked another pirate base the next day, and while they were smart enough to use the low shields for defense, they weren't actually smart enough to stand in them. Back at home, the egg finally hatched. To be honest, this baby looks more like the child than the child looks like the child. I renamed her Baby Yoda, which made the child unhappy. Then we attacked the final faction with spacer tech. They instantly set our ship on fire, so I had to send Buck back to take care of it, while the rest of the squad punished the pirates severely. With them gone, only the four ultra tech bases remained. We attacked the first of the Empire outposts on day 293, using the other cluster mortars to defeat the cowards. Yes, guys stand no chance. Oh, their shuttle! They used the shuttle to escape? As we left, I realized we forgot Buck, so the poor guy had to walk back home. Acid smoke then covered the entire area, and suddenly our base was very green. Buck returned the next day, and the child hit another growth spur. As a birthday gift, Daddy Buck gave her a masterwork hyperweave kimono, and she looked badass wearing it. But Mommy Maxi Pets wanted to outdo Daddy's gift, and she took the child with her on a raid. But little did they know that the farmers had reinforcements waiting to pounce. A huge group came flying in, and a bloody battle ensued. Oh, the child child got shot. I repeat, the child got shot. The injuries were severe, and the child actually lost a lung, but in the end, we broke them, and the victory was ours. Uga Booga quickly crafted a new lung, and when the caravan returned back home, Rika fixed the child. Orion then conquered another city, but we decided to attack Nostra's killers next. Alas, they were clearly cowards, and only left a couple of turrets behind. Max attacked us the next day, but we ambushed them in the deep forest. We will take battle to these nasties, and we will destroy them. That threat dealt with, we then decided to attack Orion Installation, who had rocket launchers and OC defense rifles just like we did. But we had the mortar advantage, and while Maxipads did get hit by a rocket launcher, we were again victorious. Just two bases remained, and we dropped into a frozen desert to deal with the Orion guys once and for all. This was the place that just recently conquered, and clearly their defenses were not ready for the mighty Buck and his squad. With one last enemy base left, I wanted to have some fun. What if we send the child alone out there? to destroy that outpost. I think that would be glorious. So, I sent the child out there alone with four cluster mortars, and while the automatic weaponry did a lot of damage, the child couldn't defend the ship alone. Ooh, he got them to flee. Oh no, Kevin lost. They've been captured. I admit it, this was my brightest moment, but naturally, now we had to save the child, and the whole colony chimed in to build a new albatross, which was completed by NSD on day 300. Buck and Maxi led the raid. You thought you can steal my children? Oh, you should think again, you bastards. We obliterated the Empire. Alas, the child was nowhere to be found. 300 days have passed and the planet was now empty. Buck was the de facto king of the world and our colony became the new capital. We might have lost the child, but the world has been conquered and we are its leaders now. So, thank you everyone for watching.